Is Canada's founding father a national hero or a genocidal criminal? Here's the case for and against Sir John A. Macdonald. On the one hand, Macdonald is almost singularly responsible for creating the nation we know today. He helped convince a handful of skeptical colonies to form a new country, drove a railroad to the Pacific, and forever solidified Canada's shaky claim to the West by filling it with settlers. He was an extremely skilled politician, and he was also incredibly corrupt. He used both to build Canada, and had he never been born, it's entirely possible that the country we know today would be a handful of separate countries and American territories. But to create his coast-to-coast -coast dominion, Macdonald pursued policies that aggressively shunted Indigenous peoples out of the way. He founded Canada's system of Indian residential schools. His Indian agents withheld food from starving Indian bands in order to forcibly relocate them onto squalid reserves overseen by dictatorial Indian agents. He introduced a policy of internal passports under which native people would be immediately arrested if found off reserve without permission from the Crown. When Macdonald was first sworn in as Prime Minister in 1867, many of the lands that would become Canada were populated by healthy and relatively autonomous Indigenous bands. When Macdonald died in 1891, Canadian Aboriginals, particularly in the West, were confined to reserves, their lands flooded with settlers, and their children taken away to residential schools. European settlement had never been great for Canada's native people, but under Macdonald it reached a level of almost complete subjugation. In 1871, the Irish adventurer William Butler had written that the Plains Cree were perhaps the only tribe of Prairie Indians who have yet suffered no injustice at the hands of the white man. A mere 14 years later, the Cree were so thoroughly put down that in one notorious incident in what is now Alberta, an Indian agent summoned his emaciated Cree charges to the on-reserve ration house, only to declare April Fools and turn them away with nothing. In orchestrating this, Macdonald was partly a man of his time. Steamrolling native inhabitants was par for the course in both the United States and the wider British Empire, and Macdonald faced surprisingly little opposition in Ottawa. Several times, the Liberal opposition actually berated him for spending too much on food relief for famine-stricken natives. But without Macdonald's grand vision of a transcontinental country forged in only 20 years, there's reason to believe Canada's Indian policy would never have been as cruel, as quick, or as total. Canadians are right to look at this and assume that it may not have happened without Macdonald. But at the same time, all of this has Macdonald's stamp on it too.